Over the weekend, I was thinking about Bitcoin's historical and future compound annual growth rate and how we might reasonably attempt to forecast it or at least assess whether its past performance has any relationship with its future growth. We've all heard the phrase, past performance is not indicative of future results. That's mostly true, but is it always true? There are cases where past performance persists because it is rooted in fundamentals rather than randomness. Take gold, for example. Over the last 55 years, gold compounded at roughly 9% per year, while commodities like corn, soybeans, and wheat averaged closer to 2%. Gold's unique monetary properties and scarcity explain this long-term divergence. It would be unreasonable to expect soybeans to suddenly start outperforming gold over the next half century. Some assets outperform not because of speculation, but because of their inherent properties simply make them better stores of value over time. In my opinion, Bitcoin shows a similar pattern. Despite its volatility, its compound annual growth rate has remained remarkably consistent, plus 57% over one year, plus 77% over two years, plus 76% over three years, plus 15% over four years, and plus 51% over five years. These numbers reflect the monetization of a scarce digital asset in a world where fiat supply continues to expand. Right now, the Schiller P.E. ratio of the S&P 500 is around 40x, meaning investors are willing to pay $40 for each dollar of annual earnings. This is partly because people are using the S&P 500 as a store of wealth, not just as an investment. A large monetary premium is embedded in its price, pushing valuations far above what corporate earnings alone justify. Bitcoin inverts this dynamic. Since Bitcoin is money, its earnings could be represented by its compound annual growth rate, which reflects its ability to preserve and expand purchasing power over time. That growth is driven by two primary forces, monetary inflation in fiat currencies and continued adoption of Bitcoin as a superior monetary asset. When viewed this way, buying the S&P 500 at 40 XPE is equivalent to buying $40 for $1 of annual earnings, while buying Bitcoin at what could be considered a 2x PE means paying $2 for $1 of earnings, assuming its 50% CAGR persists through continued monetary expansion and monetary adoption. Eventually, markets will reconcile these valuations. As capital migrates from inflated financial assets into harder money, the monetary premium embedded in equities will be gradually absorbed by Bitcoin. I think this is happening and likely will continue happening over the next decade. Thanks for watching everyone and see you next time.